Hello and welcome. It's long walk down day here on the Tenerife field trip. After an initial coach trip we will be starting at the approximate location of the mouse to the east of Mount Tidy and walking down to the coast to the town of Arafo. We now zoom in on our walk. As you can see we begin our walk from the drop off on TF24. We will wind down through various forested and open areas and then into Arafo for pick up by the coach. The initial altitude is around about 2000 meters and the gradient is fairly gentle initially until we reach the location of a landslide where the gradient increases markedly. We walk through some volcanic scree and into a final pine forest before hitting the tarmac for the final descent into a raffo. We actually begin our walk at the top of the pine forest zone. We can tell this because the density of the trees is quite low and the trees also exhibit some dwarfism. This means they are shorter than normal. We don't encounter the laurel forest here, but we do see some evidence of the Thermophilus forest on descent into Raffo. As you will see, it isn't 100% clear as it is in the textbook. We will record temperature and relative humidity on the descent. Care must be taken not to hold the instrument next to your body. Hang the instrument on your bag, away from the body, so you measure the air temperature and humidity and not that associated with your body. So now we begin our walk along a dusty volcanic path. We immediately pass some pine trees and approach our first stop at a viewing platform looking east down the valley. You can see lots of pine trees and the clouds below are beginning to climb up the valley. Although the clouds are trapped by a temperature inversion, we can see they are beginning to punch through that temperature inversion with some small wisps of cloud just getting through. The pine trees are able to collect lots of water from these clouds. Their needles are hygroscopic. If each cloud has the amount of liquid water equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 3 kilograms per meter cu cubed. That means every cubic meter of air has 1 gram. That's probably a slight overestimate, but it gives us um, a good idea. Then Let's say that we have a pine tree and if we say the effective area that the pine needles have is one meter by one meter. So it's one meter squared. So our pine tree is here. This is our pine tree. And the effective area of these pine needles is one meter squared and if we also say that the wind as it blows through this tree as the cloud blows through the tree it's 10 meters per second and we have as I said 1 times 10 to the minus 3 kilograms per meter cubed then we can say if we if we consider 100% collection of the water that passes through these needles, which again is an overestimate, but it gives us an idea, then we can say that of that 10 to the minus 3 kilograms per meter cubed, the amount of water collected per second we're going to get by multiplying by the air velocity by multiplying by the area which is one meter squared 
of the pine needles, then the meters squared and the meters cancel with her, with this. And that gives me a figure for the number of kilograms of water collected by the pine tree per second, which is equal to 10 to the minus 2. 1 times 10 to the minus 2 kilograms per second. Now, if we consider this happens for, say, one hour, which is 3,600 seconds, then I multiply this 10 to the minus 2 by 3,600, and I end up with 36 kilograms of water per hour. So a pine tree like this, if we consider 100% collection, will collect 32 kilograms every hour. Now, clearly that's an overestimate, but this is an important source of water, fresh water, for Tenerife. So this water collected by the pine needles goes into the ground and into the internal galleries of Tenerife. We then carry on down the path and see some ash deposits to the left. The lines in these ash deposits indicate where the ash came from and the direction of the wind. It seems this ash deposit came from the north. At around 18 150 meters we notice that the temperature is rising unexpectedly and the relative humidity is going up too. We stop to find what appears to be a microclimate with ferns and mushrooms on the ground. How can this be at such high altitude? We take notes and carry on. The temperature starts to drop again and we are surrounded by pine trees. At around 1750 metres we encounter some red ash deposits. These contain iron oxide. That's why they're red. There are clasts of different sizes in these flows. Although we are surrounded by pine trees with pine needles on the ground, you notice a Soncus plant. It looks like a giant dandelion. In fact, it is of the same tribe within the sunflower family. The altitude here is 1650 meters. The pine forests open up and you can see a field of black volcanic lava and ash and a cinder cone volcano in the distance. In the past, this volcano had a violent eruption and emitted lava bombs which flew through the air and formed the black field of lava we see today. These lava bombs form a shape that minimizes their energy as they fly through the air. They look like a teardrop shape. We stop briefly for lunch and then on to hunt for the best looking lava bomb. Our journey continues down a volcanic path and we have to zigzag down as the gradient has become very steep. 
there is evidence here of a landslide to the left. Chestnut trees are spotted. They look dead, but they are alive. This means they are very stressed. They are not endemic to the islands. How did they get here? It's likely they were brought over by a Spaniard. You can make flour from the nuts to make bread. There aren't many wheat farms on the island and importing flour is very expensive. These chestnut trees are also the first evidence on our walk down of agriculture. Are we entering the Thermophila zone? We now stop at a viewing point for a short while. The altitude is around 1250 metres. Here we are below the cloud deck and there is a large rocky lava tube. The fact that it has such large rocks in the flow means that it was very energetic. The flow was very energetic as it had to carry these large rocks. We now enter a pine forest again at around about 1000 meters altitude. Here the pines are thriving and they are very tall. There are lots of pine needles on the floor and this makes the terrain very slippy. At around about 900 meters altitude you notice we are leaving the pine tree forest. It now starts to get greener with a marked increase in undergrowth. It was quite difficult walking down the rocky paths and you are now relieved to see that there is tarmac at around about 800 meters altitude. Although you quickly find out that it's very difficult walking down such a steep gradient, you push on to the finish. As you do, you notice some small farm fields either side and evidence of large scars in the rock due to landslides. We now arrive. All that is left is a final stop in Arafo before boarding the coach. This looks like a good place. At the hotel you download data from your temperature and relative humidity probe to plot out. <laughs> it shows that temperature decreased with height. A quick calculation shows that the lapse rate, how the temperature decreases with altitude, is approximately equal to the adiabatic rate. You can also see that the temperature inversion where the temperature stops decreasing and increases is around about 1500 meters. You plot out the temperature along the path with colors corresponding to the temperature. The microclimate we observed shows up on this temperature plot quite nicely with red dots where the microclimate is. What is going on here? OK, this brings the long walk down to an end. If you enjoyed it, please like the video.